Within the past decade, there have been many new innovations in roller coasters. Like there was a hill within a launch on Copperhead Strike, a launch wooden coaster, that being Lightning Rod, the high speed transfer track, um, Time Traveler itself, the Axis Coaster, Topper Track, Ibox Track, basically RMC. But that brings me to my question what else is there to innovate? There are several different aspects that I think roller coasters can and have innovated, so we'll take a look at these. The first one I want to look at is the track itself. So for a long time there were just two types of roller coasters, steel and wood. Um, and then Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, they introduced the iBox track, which kind of revolutionized hybrid coasters. Now there are rides made with steel, rides made with wood, and rides made with both. Now let's take a look at ways that they've innovated in the past in terms of track to see where they could possibly go in the future. So in terms of the hybrid coaster, GCI entered the hybrid category with their Titan track. So I don't think there is really any room to innovate in the hybrid track. GCI could start doing what RMC did and create new rides out of old ones, create new layouts, or they could just start retracking current coasters like RMC is starting to do. So you can either keep the coaster the same with new track or create a completely new layout, but I don't see a lot of room for innovation in terms of the hybrid coaster. Now if we look at wooden track, I don't think there's a lot to innovate here either. Parks can continue creating wooden coasters on site or have them prefabricated, we've seen both in the past. Maybe they could add some new elements to wooden coasters, but I don't feel like there's a lot of room for innovation due to the limits of wood. Like if we take a look at Lightning Rod's downtime, there's not a lot. I have seen a concept for inverted wooden coaster, I don't know how likely that is, mainly just because of the limits of wood. So. I mean, there are different train orientations, which I'll get to in a second, that could be applied to wooden coasters, but I don't see a lot of that happening because wood just lacks the rigidness that steel can provide. Speaking of steel coasters, what can they do? Um, I don't feel like there's much innovation here. I mean, in, historically, this type of track has seen a lot of innovation from the very introduction of the tubular steel, but I don't know what else they can do. I know a lot of manufacturers have variations on the steel track with different shapes. So we look at Cheetah Hunt versus the tried and true B&M box shape. Recently, RMC introduced the single rail coaster and now Intamin has also copied that. In terms of things that we could see on these rides, maybe mid-ride like having a tilt track or a drop track, maybe we could see more of those, or maybe we could see those on hybrid or wooden coasters. So now that we've looked at different types of track, let's look at different methods of energy. So there's the traditional chain lift, which has been used for countless years, and there's a similar concept of the cable lift. Both take trains up a large hill to build potential energy. There are different types of launches, from hydraulic, pneumatic, and the flywheel. The most common used launch is the magnetic launch, whether that's through LIMs or the more preferred LSMs. Recent innovations have brought us to the multi-pass launch and also the high-speed transfer track, but what else can they use? In terms of launches, I don't see much innovation, mainly just refining launches to make them faster, more reliable, etc because you can only have so many launches, maybe we'll see more unique ways to build energy like elevator lifts, but for the most part I don't think there's a lot of room to innovate in terms of creating energy for roller coasters. You can either have the slow buildup of potential energy through the larger lifts or the fast way to build up energy through a launch, but I don't know if a in-between way or I can't think of any other ways that that could be innovated. So now let's look at trains. Trains have a big part to play in this, and I think this is where some of the biggest innovation will come from in the coming years. So different trains can allow for different experiences on roller coasters. Like if we look at the 4D roller coaster, that can allow for extra dimension of spinning, either freely or controlled. 
or there's the spinning coasters, which have a different axis of spinning as opposed to the 4D, but it gives that extra dimension and can also be free spinning or controlled just like the 4D roller coasters. There are also different ways to orient riders. So there's the flying position, the inverted position, or the wing position. Um, and one of the newest innovations was the SNS Axis Coaster, which is yet another axis on which riders can spin. So while I think that more innovations will come from the trains, there are still only so many dimensions that a person can be spun around, and there's only so many orientations that riders can be positioned in comfortably. Another area that I can see room for innovation is the elements on a ride. So like if we take look at the traditional Immelman loop, you take riders up, then they go upside down, and then they roll out of it. But if we look at Velocicoaster's variation of the Immelman, it's a lot different than a lot of traditional B&M versions of the Immelman loop. So I think that there's room to expand in terms of that, things like that. I mean, there's only so many ways that you can really flip a rider upside down or maneuver a rider, orient a rider, but I still think that there's a lot of room in terms of elements for the innovation. And then also different types of rides can have different types of elements. Like we saw a new layout for the Axis Coaster and that provides a lot of different elements that the ride can go through that normal rides typically wouldn't be able to take the riders through in a comfortable manner. So there is a lot of room still in terms of elements for innovation. But my biggest prediction on how roller coasters will innovate in the future is through more interactivity. So they can have a button that they can choose to go forwards or backwards and everyone votes. We've seen a ride like this or like Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket where you can choose your music or we might see more AR, VR rides. Um, I just think that this is the way that roller coasters are going to lean towards in the future will be more interactivity on their rides. It won't necessarily just be the same thing over and over and over, but you can have some variations in the rides. So to answer my question, can roller coasters innovate? Yes, they can, but the ways in which they can innovate seem to be getting smaller and smaller. A lot of things have already been done, which makes me question what else is there room to do. So I would love to know if you agree or disagree with me. This is kind of a controversial topic, um, and I could see it going either way. I mean, if we look at other areas of life, like the internet, online shopping became a thing. That was a huge innovation, but now we see a plethora of online shopping. What's the next big thing in terms of the internet? I don't really know. Is there room to innovate in the internet? I don't really know. So there's room either way. Um, let me know what crazy things that you guys think roller coasters could innovate on. I just came up with a few ideas, but I know that there are plenty more out there. Um, this is closed-minded thinking that we're gonna run out of things to innovate on and thank you so much for watching this video go live an enthused life god bless